Now here's the thing. When it comes to the Grim Life Collective, obviously we are a horror channel, and I have no shame in saying I absolutely hate the holidays. But occasionally, horror and the holiday season mixes, and that's what's happening here today in Los Angeles at Seasons Screamings. It's that special time of year where cozy fireplaces turn nightmarish and, well, nightmarish and people use severed arms as Halloween decorations, like Art Sideshow here. Gift giving still happens, and all the monsters start coming out. It's also a time where we see friends like Danny Spooky Treats, as well as a whole bunch of Krampuses showing up. Trust me, there's gonna be a bunch of them. And Baby Ghoul, you're looking extra, extra spooky and holiday gorgeous. Notice what I did there? Gorgeous. Wherever I come, bad luck is coming my way. Wherever I go, hard luck is dead in state. Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. And one of our favorite things to do here is the Hall of Yuletide Spirits, where basically a whole bunch of home haunters build something scary in the dark. Now we're here before everything opens up, before people get here. And inside this hall, there will be scare actors. But let's walk through here and just see what everything looks like. Kind of like behind the scenes tour, because they built the North Pole. There's some scary stuff here. This is beautiful. Oh, would you look at that? It's a fruitcake. Yuck. Instead of Santa's workshop, we have Santa's sweatshop. That's a little clever. And they even have some spooky mannequins. That's a... That's a little disturbing, lady. But I think our favorite thing is over here. It's called the Fudgetorium. Now, all of this is put on by Fear Farm, fearfarmhunt.com. I'm going to show you guys that in just a minute. Man, I can't wait for scare actors to come here. Look at that. That's an eyeball. What is that, a fudge monster? <laughs> Jessica's having way too much fun walking through all this. This is something else, that's for sure. Now back there, past these two skeletons, is where the home haunts are, like the actual haunts you can walk through. But this is beautiful. What is going on back here? <laughs> like the little skeleton bird. Now, there are other home haunts here, but this opening, the North Pole that we're just showing, is put on by Fear Farm, and there's their social media information right there if you want to check them out. Once Season Screamings officially opens, in about like 20 minutes, the scare actors get here, we'll take it the camera inside the houses, the miniature houses. I'm not gonna lie, baby, but I kind of feel like I'm in some sort of twisted Halloween Whoville mix-up matchup, right? Now, like I said, once all this opens up, we're gonna come back in here and take the camera in all the different haunts, like the little miniature haunts. But we have a convention to attend, and there's some special guests here, the Flanniverse. Now, I just said a word that you may or may not have heard before, Flanniverse. Now, if you don't know what that is, basically, the Flanniverse is this. On Netflix, there's a show called The Haunting of Hill House, and when it came out, it was, uh, it was pretty groundbreaking, especially whenever you found out the identity of the bent neck lady, eh, right? And then The Haunting of Hill House came out, which was phenomenal. And then a series came out called Midnight Mass, and Jessica and I both lost it for this. You see, I am a fan of religious horror, horror that has atmosphere, and who doesn't love vampires? So when Midnight Mass came on, Jessica and I watched it from beginning to end, and the cast, 
including the creator, is here. And our booth is right across the hall from them. Like we can see them. We're right next to the Flaniverse people. It's weird saying that, but that's what they call it. Now, when I say things like the Flaniverse, I'm talking about this. People like Mike Flanagan here, the creator, he's here today. Kate is here, and she is absolutely haunting at pretty much everything she does, especially Midnight Mass. Annabeth Gish is here. Henry Thomas is here as well. We all know him from E.T., as well as a bunch of other amazing roles. We're going to be talking to him a little bit later on. And directly across from us is Alex Esso. And when I say that they're directly across from us, I mean it. That's all them right there, the Flanniverse. And if I turn around this way, there's us, the Grim Life Collective. Mind blown. We're part of the Flanniverse. I mean, not really, but I can imagine. And of course, being the autograph hound that I am, I have to get something signed. But this time, instead of getting an 8x10 or a poster signed by the cast, the Flanniverse cast, got this book, Midnight Mass, The Art of Horror. This book is amazing. It's filled with a whole bunch of behind the scenes photos as well as stories. And I'm thinking to get the cast to sign the book cover in like a, I don't know, like a black Sharpie or something like that. I think it'll really pop and then just display it in our library. Who am I kidding? We don't have a library. We're going to have one now, a Midnight Mass library. Hi, I'm Mike Flanagan. I'm the creator of Midnight Mass and have I got a story for you. Episode six of Midnight Mass features a 30 page confrontation in a church um, with a body count that's well over a hundred. Um, we had to film this scene in a tiny space in the middle of the peak of the global pandemic. And this is before vaccinations were available. This is before any of the COVID protocols had really been sussed out and battle tested by a lot of productions. So we had to fold 110 extras into a tiny church with an, our entire ensemble cast and crew decked out in PPE. And every morning we had to have everybody take off their mask and start to do the scene. We tested every extra in that room um, with a rapid COVID test as they arrived to work. We'd have to pull people out of rotation. They weren't allowed onto set until they had cleared it. And the scene itself is, to this day, the most complicated sequence I've ever directed. There's 137 individual setups, three cameras per setup. It took us six days to film it. And by the end of it, we completely trashed our set, covered it with blood, um, broken it beyond repair and somehow in the middle of all of that chaos put together what still is for me one of my favorite stretches of any show I've ever gotten to direct. Um, I've never been a part of anything like it. Uh, I'm still amazed we pulled it off and I hope you enjoy it. First and foremost, you're one of the rarest people like that I absolutely love everything that you've done. Wow. Ooh. And I can't say that a lot, a lot of people. I mean, you like you know certain things, certain movies, that, but everything that you've touched in one way or another, I've absolutely loved. Thank you. Well, now I'm, I'm gonna be terrified I'm gonna let you down. When it comes to Midnight Mass, mm -hmm. my wife and I absolutely love this. We love religious horror, we love shows or movies that have atmosphere, mm -hmm. and we love vampires. Mm -hmm. And this just knocked our socks off. And I don't wanna give too much away. I said vampires. That's, oh. I, at this point, they've had plenty of time <laughs> right? to see it. Yeah. And it's such a bleak ending that it just makes you go, ow, oh, it just hits you. Yeah. And uh, I'd love for you to sign this book. Of course, I'd be, I'd be honored to. <laughs> uh, so tell me, do you want me to sign on the on the on jacket? The cover. Or on the, no, yeah, on the jacket. On the cover. Okay, you got it. And um, in any way, it's yeah. going to be for a personal library, so I'm just guessing your, your name wherever you want. Okay. Yeah. Just just name. Yeah. You got it. I'll do. I'll just go right here, right in the middle there. Okay. Yeah, it's spooky. There you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, I'm so glad that this show resonated with you guys. It's it's still my favorite of of, of all of them. So it really this one, you know, came from there. Yeah, you know, we, we were talking yeah. about this all weekend long. We started this video that uh, the haunting of Hill House. Mm -hmm. It was pretty groundbreaking, especially like whenever you found out the big secret of the, uh, the oh, lady, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like you know, Bly Manor. But then this came out, and there's this was amazing. So thank you oh, thank for being you. a part of that. Oh, thank you so much. It, it really, really means the world to me. Uh, hi, I'm Annabeth Gish. I play Dr. Sarah Gunning in Midnight Mass, and I 
thoroughly enjoyed filming Midnight Mass. We filmed it during the height of the pandemic. We were all kind of collectively isolated in Vancouver together, but our families were able to come, so we were filming this really prescient story about a viral epidemic and religion and addiction and everything that was happening while we were in the midst of this pandemic. Um, and for me, I had quite a lot of heavy medical terminology that I had to learn, um, and I, it was very complicated. I had to learn all about Ignaz Semmelweis, who um, was one of the first people who just was a doctor advocating for us all to wash our hands, wash your hands. And he, he was like punished way back in the day for saying wash your hands, and in fact died in an insane asylum because everybody said he was crazy. So that's my Midnight Mass um, story. Wash your hands and it prevents COVID and all sorts of other things. <laughs> Huge fan. Oh, thank you. And pretty much everything that you've done. Thank and you. sadly, I'm gonna have to say, I've never seen Mystic Pizza. What? Right, but a lot of people well, have been coming you're over. You're probably not old enough to, to know. <laughs> <laughs> but Midnight Mass. Yeah. My wife and I are obsessed with this series. I mean, it is beautiful and it's haunting, and you were phenomenal. Oh, in it. thank you. Yeah, I'm. I, it was such a an honor to be a part of it, and I, I had such a powerful, profound show. I'd I'd love for you to sign the front of this book. Absolutely. It, it's a spooky book. It's beautiful. I don't know if you looked on the inside, but it's filled with a whole bunch of like behind the scenes stuff. Um, I, and I remember Abby Bernstein, the journalist, uh, it was so smart. She she did a great interview. It would so full of chalk full of interesting tidbits. Okay. Come with our, we come with our own pens. Okay, amazing. <laughs> so feel free to sign it anywhere you want, and just your name, really. Okay. This is just for our library. Okay, good. I'll just sign it over here. I'm going to say Dr. Gunning. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Name and your character. Cool. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, I'm Samantha Sloyan, and I played, no, I'm just kidding. I'm Kate <laughs> Siegel, and I played Aaron Green. And have I got a story for you. When we were shooting the final burn down, the Monsignor Pruitt Convention Center scene, they had spent so much time wiring that for um, effects. And so they had all this fire that was supposed to flame up, but it has to immediately flame down because you have to shoot the scene multiple times. And it was freezing cold and Sam Sloan is wearing these tiny ballet slippers. And like, we're all holding these water bottles that we would call our babies. And it was three in the morning and the mud was freezing underneath our feet and we'd have to break it through so that all the continuity would work. And we're ready for this scene to see the Monsignor John Pruitt the Convention Center burn down. And they go, one, two, three. And it was like barely a birthday candle. And we were all just like, what? Why? And just you could hear just the ripples of like that infuriated, furious laughter just pass through the whole cast and crew. And it was a great movie making moment. I am nervous. I know. Because <laughs> your scenes are haunting. Yes. Especially in Midnight Mass, like we love and that's what we're here for, Midnight Mass, big fans. And I can't get your image out of my head, like the last image of you in Midnight Mass. Like it, it, it haunts me. Aww. So much respect. Thank you very much. That was um, the very last thing I shot, that slow push down. And because, Chills. I know, it was <laughs> because it was, um, that was cut with the monologue that we had shot months before when we had done monologue day in my house before we burned down my house. Um, what they had to do is they had to make sure it matched. So they laid me on the ground and I had to stare directly into a, a huge uh, camera that like, it was up there that was coming down slowly while they played back that monologue. And I just lost my mind. I had this whole speech I was gonna give to the crew, just at, like everyone when they are done, everyone applauds and you say, like a nice thank you to everybody at the end of shooting something. I was crying so hard I couldn't speak. And it hasn't happened to me since I was a child and I was crying so hard I couldn't speak. So when people talk about that, like it gets me too. Like I start yeah. to remember those moments, yeah. Hi, I'm Henry Thomas, and I play Ed Flynn in Midnight Mass. One of my favorite movies about filming Midnight Mass was playing a crab fisherman 
I actually got to go out on the ocean in a crab boat and go crabbing for two days. And I learned how to do everything and I learned how to drive the boat. And the most fun I had was driving the boat and dropping some traps. Perfect. Much respect seeing you again. Thanks very much. It's Appreciate been a it. while. I feel like the last time we saw you was Days of the Dead, Las Vegas. I think, yeah, it might have been, yeah. Uh, we love Midnight Mass. Oh, thanks. And your character in that was just unbelievable. Like, oh, I thanks. felt so bad and sorry for him. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of a, a tragic old curmudgeon. You know? uh, we have this, this amazing book, Midnight Mass, and we're trying to figure out a way to get people to sign it so it looks like a cross. We got Mike here, we got Kate there, and Andrew. Okay. Right there. So I figured like either up there on the top. You got it. Or if you want to, somewhere down here in the bottom, there okay. or there. Yeah. Whichever uh, one you want. I'll take right over here, why not? Yeah, and then the character name. Yeah. I always forget to say that. <laughs> it's okay, I got it. Perfect. I can, this is one I can remember. <laughs> Beautiful. Hi, my name is Alex Esso. I played Mildred Gunning in Midnight Mass. And my, fa my one of my favorite things on that set was uh, trying to make Annabeth Gish laugh as much as possible, especially during the church scenes and outdoor and when we're walking with candles. That was really fun. Um, my other favorite part, uh, even though it was long, was uh, the makeup. Getting all the prosthetics and makeup and stuff put on, it was really, I mean, it was fun because our makeup team was amazing and the coolest people ever, but I also feel like that stuff really helps to inform a performance and it really, like, yeah, it was really cool. And I kind of have a feeling of what I'm going to look like when I'm an old lady now, so I'm not, so it's all right. I can, I'm happy with it. I can live with it. Big, big fan. Thank you. Uh, Midnight Mass. We've been getting this signed by everybody. And I have to say, your character in Midnight Mass was, was out of this world. Like, Thank I just you. loved watching the progression of her character and the healing process for the most part. Yes. Like, yeah. it, it was pretty immaculate to watch. Yeah. And so much respect to that. Thank you very much. And I appreciate that. I have to veer away from this for a little bit and talk about Dr. Sleep for one moment. Please, yeah, that's fine. What was it like being <laughs> like in, in a, a shining story and I mean like playing the character I think anyone who's ever seen The Shining can probably imagine how amazing it was because <laughs> it really was a dream come true like I I, I I have no shame in saying that I did cry a little bit when I got the phone call <laughs> because The Shining was already one of my favorite movies and her performance was already one of my favorite performances it was a huge influence on me as an actor and I definitely had a little like anxiety attack moment of like, oh God, I can't fuck this up. I'm not allowed. What am I gonna do? Midnight Mass yes. is just phenomenal. Thank and uh, we've been trying to get this signed and I like the idea that everybody's been signing it in almost like a cross shape. Oh! And I thought either right there would probably be yes. best. Yes, I think that's a great idea. And here's Aw, right next to Henry, that's fantastic. And you got it. The character name. I always forget to mention the character name. Mildred. Mildred Gunning. Actually, maybe I should put Gunning right beneath. Just so, just so we're clear. I saw that Annabeth did that, so I'm going to copy her. Gotcha. <sighs> Perfect. I yeah. love this book so much. Right? Oh, Abby man. did an amazing job. Yeah. It's always really nice to see the Lugosi family yeah. here. How are you doing, Lynn? I'm well, thank you. So tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing here. Yeah. But what the Lugosi family sure. is doing these well, days. Well, I'm Bela Lugosi's granddaughter, Lynn Lugosi Sparks. This is my husband, Bob. He helps us in the booth. And I run the licensing business and legacy business for the family. And all of the things you see in the booth are officially licensed. And we're really proud of the products. and. Hope you enjoy it. All right, so this is Bob. Hi. This is Bob. How you doing, Bob? I'm so, Dracula's granddaughter. And you are the, <laughs> I'm gonna call you the, like the Cape Crusader? Master. The Cape Crusader, there you go. <laughs> okay, hi, so Bela had a couple of capes, one that he was buried in, and another which got donated to the Academy Museum. 
But Lynn meticulously measured it and found very like materials and the right colors, because people didn't know in the black and white movies what color the interior really was. But what I like to do is I like to have people actually feel it. <laughs> like so the weight, because it's I heavy. I grab people, because imagine Bela in the 20s, 30s, 40s, wearing this in a non-air conditioned you know, stage under hot lights. So I put it on people just so they could feel it. All right. All right, so I put the cape on. Oh, it's heavy. It's very heavy. <laughs> and I explained how these straps really went around him and tied so that it wouldn't fall off, right? So it didn't tie here like you see no, in Halloween costumes. No, it went around, right. right. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, it reaches back And there. then I take pictures of people and ask them to pose. Come on. Get them into character. <laughs> Like, I got chills. I, I feel like, like I'm kind of cha like channeling Bela. Yes. Like this is, whew. I kind of just want to run through the halls. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. This is. And I always say, hey, we have to amazing. straighten your collar. All right. Okay, there you go. I, I like the profile shot, <laughs> that's great. And I, I love that this is heavy, you know, like, I can't tell you how many times growing up for Halloween I went as, you know, Dracula and you always get those like really thin, flimsy capes. Right. If I had this, oh heckins man, I'd be And and people can actually buy this. Yes. So is it it's Trick or Treat Studios that that put right. out this limited edition. Or they could come right? to the Lugosi booth. Yes. And Go buy to the it Lugosi from the booth. <laughs> the Lugosi booth. Yeah, yeah. To get so yeah, it comes You're in a package okay. actually. So that's what yeah, the look at this package thing. looks like. Much respect. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want to take it off. Goodbye. Okay. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Maybe it's just me being a fan of Bela Lugosi or horror movies, but putting it on, I kind of felt like I was channeling Lugosi. Not Dracula, but Bela Lugosi himself, like the vibe of who he was. I had to get one. Now this is not a commercial for Trick or Treat Studios or the Lugosi family, just a lot of respect for the family and Lynn herself. Do yourself a favor, go pick it up from their website. You won't regret it, this thing is amazing. Walking through the exhibitor hall, we come across our friends, Creepsville 666. And Jessica, you've made a discovery. Yes. Tell us what you found. I get a lot of questions asking where I get my bat jacket, and I thought it was out of stock, but in fact, it has been restocked. So look, this is what you see me wear in every video, this is my fleece back coat, and it is from Creaseville 666. Now, I wear a plus size in my videos, which is what this one is. So it's the 2X to 4X, but you can get a smaller size, or they have it in red. Technically, the red doubles as a Halloween costume because the hood has double ears on it. So you can be the I devil, really or cute. you can be a bat. Yeah. Either way, you got this like this it's got the point. Cape. Oh, look, it's got a point on it. <laughs> I love it. Well, this is always a good sign. Our buddy Ryan from Strange Cult is here. Mr. Ryan from Strange Cult. Hello. Cult. Cult. It's always <laughs> nice seeing you, man. Great seeing you, brother. All right. So tell us about what you brought with you today. Okay. Today I brought um, some of the creeper styles, some flats, and some boots. Um, I brought in the new Coven boots. These just came in last week, uh, lower version. Um, within the flats, I brought the Red Rum Shining flats. In the Creepers, um, I brought the classic Jack-O-Lantern styles. I also brought some that 3M Reflective, the Room 237s, the Stripes, just a lot of pretty amazing stuff. Your horror shoes, I'm gonna call them horror shoes. Yeah. Are I'm not kidding, everybody loves them, especially Jessica. She loses her mind over pumpkins. Yeah. And your pumpkin shoes, look at this. Yeah, those are slick. I am actually the first company to actually put a jack-o'-lantern on a shoe. So uh, about five years ago, I obviously love Halloween, love horror, love spooky things. And I started the shoe brand and was like, oh, why don't I do a jack-o'-lantern shoe? Best part about that is that Everyone told me it was a horrible idea and nobody would buy orange shoes. Really? <laughs> yeah. I was literally told by everyone not to do it. Wow, okay. And it's 
probably what made the company. Man. I mean, when these came out, everything blew up and everything kind of changed. See, that's like the perfect example of like, don't let other people. Well, always do what you think, you know, what, do what you dig is kind of what my motto is in life. Yeah. You know, you're not going to be happy doing something, trying to follow a trend, trying to chase what somebody else is doing. I think the biggest thing with Strange Cold is I've always tried really hard to be original, to do things that other people haven't done, to work with special materials, also just high quality shoes that people can actually wear and walk in. Um, you know, it's not just costume shoes. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, everything kind of comes from that. And I mean, every day I have probably another 10 ideas and then another 10 and then another 20. And then, you know, I mean, if you go on the website, you'll see, or even the Instagram, it's like, I've probably designed, you know, almost a thousand styles so far in the first few years. And I probably just sampled another 200 that are coming in the next year. So, and some of them don't like. Some of them are limited release, right? Um, most of the shoes, um, minus the like all black versions or something that's kind of a staple, everything is limited edition. And everything was kind of meant to be that way, almost in a streetwear vein. Where, well, cool. If you own a pair, that's pretty amazing because some shoes I've made, there's only 50 pairs in the world. Yeah, and they're never getting are, made again. Some of them are pretty sought after. Well, and that's the thing, is that now they end up being like eBay shoes. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, if you look at something like, okay, this is a chunky purple glitter with the reflective underlay. There's only 100 pairs in the world, and it's never being made again. I actually own a pair. And there you go. And they are pretty intense in the sunlight. <laughs> exactly. And so, yeah, a lot of things like that, they just, you know, they come in for a season and they're gone. I've done spooky Valentine's Day collections. Spooky Christmas, I've done Krampus shoes. I, I did jack-o'-lanterns that were candy cane striped. I mean, there's a lot of really weird ones out there that are pretty awesome. But it's cool when you see somebody wearing them, it's like, wow, you really, you're one of those people. There. Or especially that first run of jack-o'-lantern shoes. Oh, the originals. The originals that I see, because I'm like, there's like 40 of those in the world. So if you see somebody wearing the originals. Oh, I knew they were around since day one, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. Or they bought them for me in a parking lot because I was so small at the time. I mean, and, and that's the thing, that it just keeps growing and keeps expanding. And, and, you know, I'm really just excited about what's coming in the future. And I'm, you know, working hard on a clothing line that should be coming out cool. in the next year, which should be fun. And uh, yeah, just. Onward and upward, man. You're doing great stuff. We love it. I appreciate it. it. I'm really digging these red rim shoes from The Shining. Also, it's cool as heckins because Henry Thomas and Alex Esso from Dr. Sleep are here. How fitting. It's a kind of like a Shining reunion because Steven Weber is here as well. If you want to find more info on Strange Cult, basically type this into all of your social media, including your web browser, and you'll find stuff on them. And yeah, they're good. They're good shoes. Jessica loves them all the time. I own a couple pair. You won't regret it. All right, baby girl. You ready to go into the Hall of Yuletide Spirits? Get a little bit of a, a scary Christmas scream, maybe? Yeah. Looks like our first stop is this creepy little place.
always troublesome when they know your name. Come over this way. Come over here. Look, I. 